Let's look at these conditional probabilities a slightly different way. Um, here we're being asked to find the probability of E given F. So we're trying to figure out the probability that we're within E if we already know that we're within F. So on those other examples it was um, perhaps a little easier to, to, to maybe to visualize um, but on this one, essentially what we're doing is we're restricting ourselves, we're getting rid of all this. We know that we're in F, because this says given F. That's what this part is. We know that F has happened, so we know that none of this stuff can happen. So we're essentially, we're either going to be in this point 0.2 area or the point 0.3 area. And so what we end up doing is we say, okay, our probability is point 0.2, except um, we kind of have to rescale this. Or you can think of this as, um, you can actually think of this in the, the number of outcomes. If there was five total outcomes here, two of them were here, f three of them were here, two out of five would, would be our probability. That's essentially what's happening here. We get 0.2 out of 0.5. I don't know why we're just 0.3 there. Um, the 0.2 plus 0.3, there's 0.5 total there if we're in F. Um, what I'm really doing here is I'm using this the formula here. The probability of E given F is equal to the probability of E intersect F divided by the probability of F. So what I'm doing is I'm using that formula. E intersect F, that's this probability right here. And the probability of F, that was the, the sum of those two, the 0.2 plus 0.3. Of course, this gives us 2 fifths, which we could, <coughs> we could write as 0.4.